in this video, we are going to get started with Power Automate. And if you're new to this channel, my name is Harry and I work with Microsoft as a technology strategist. And the goal of this channel is to help you learn software and to really inspire you with technology you may not have used before to try and improve the productivity of you know, yourself or your business. But in this video, we're going to be looking really at Power Automate. And your first question probably is, what is Power Automate? And man, is it a cool service? What it really allows you to do is start automating out all those manual tasks that you might be doing, maybe for yourself or in your organization. And those tasks might be like saving attachments that come in from emails or moving data from one application to another. But with it, you're going to really save a lot of time in your day-to-day -day business. And what you might be asking at this point is, well, you've mentioned automation and that sounds somewhat scary. But the great thing about this solution is that it's what we call low code, no code. So you could be an IT professional, a developer, or you could be on the sales team and you'll be able to still be able to create a workflow with this service. And that is super powerful. You don't have to be a deep developer where you're looking at something that to you might look like something out of the matrix. You just need to know what you're trying to achieve, which is what are you trying to automate? And you can, you know, if you have that inspiration, you can build it in the platform. So let's go ahead and get started with actually looking at creating your first flow. All right, so let's go ahead and get this party started. So first of all, I'm just going to be in Bing and I'm going to search for Power Automate. And the URL that you're going to want to get to is flow.microsoft.com. And you might be asking yourself already, well, why is it called flow.microsoft.com when you're navigating into Power Automate? Well, Flow was the original name for Power Automate, but then we rebranded it to make sure it was part of the Power Platform, which we're not going to talk about the Power Platform today, but that's a whole host of other applications. But they rebranded it from Flow to Power Automate. And now we can create flows and you know, there's workflows that we're going to look at inside the Power Automate platform. So now we're inside Power Automate. The first thing you're going to get is the home page. And this is really just built and designed to get you started. So you can see that we already have what we call templates that you can start building things like get today's weather forecast from my current location, the popular services that we connect to. And then there's just some guidance of different things that you can, you know, you can do within Power Automate. The next thing that I want to show you is just some of the kind of highlights of the navigation that you're going to want to be familiar with in your Power Automate journey. So the first thing you want to be familiar with is action items. And action items are what we use when we start creating those um, approval flows. So if you have a workflow that says, okay, well, we want to up upload a document into a SharePoint site, but before we can share it out to our customers, we need somebody to go ahead and approve that. Look, is this fit? Is this file ready for the outside world? Accept it you know, or reject it. And then we have my flows, which is where all the flows that I've created will be stored, or if I'm part of team flows and so on and so forth, they're all going to be stored here. You can also go and create flows from here as well. But there is also the create section where this is really built for you to really get started nice and fast with the different types of flows, which we'll come back and talk about later on. And then you've got templates, which are all the pre-built templates from Microsoft, which are to get you, well, one, started quickly, but two, to give you some inspiration on the different things that can be created here. because. This isn't just for the Microsoft uh, templates. You know, it's not just for SharePoint, OneDrive, Outlook, for example. You know, it's also different things in here for, uh, you know, Eventbrite or different applications that make sense. And then we have the connectors. So we just said there that we can connect to different applications. Well, connectors is where you can see all the different services that you have the ability to, to work with. And what you'll find here is that you can go and search and see what you can do with these. Um, and you can see here things like Twitter and you know, Office 365, Gmail. 
there's a whole host of services that allow you to get started. But what we're going to do and spend a lot of our time in is going through how to create a flow and what that experience looks like. So let's get started with creating our first flow. Alrighty, so we are under create in Power Automate. And now let's look at how you can create your first flow. We're only going to talk about the first three options here, automated flow, instant flow, and scheduled flow. Um, UI flow and business process flow, we'll talk about them in another video. But for simplicity, I want to talk about the main three that you're probably going to use. And there's a couple of ways that you can get started. You can either do this from start from blank or start from a template. I'm going to start our world with starting from a template. And as we go through these examples, we will then get to start from blank. But firstly, just because it's first up and hopefully all of you will have this in a similar position, I'm going to start from template and choose save an Office 365 email attachment to OneDrive for business. And if you're starting from a template, this is really simple. You haven't got to do too much. You just click on the um, click on the template you want to build. It's then going to tell you what this template does. You know, easily save your Office 365 attachments and so on and so forth. Uh, it's then going to tell you what flows actually going to connect to. So in this case, it's going to be Office 365 and it's going to be OneDrive for business as expected. We're then going to go ahead and just click create flow. What you're going to see after this is built is that you're going to come into kind of the flow homepage, so to speak. This is just where you can look at all the details about your flow. So we can see the description, who owns it. After it's ran, we're going to see all the run history. And then at the top here, you can start seeing more additional options. And I can come in, for example, and do edit. And I'm not going to go too far into this because I don't want us to be overwhelmed. But there are just key things that we, we want to care about or at least know about. And first of all, it's you know, what are the kind of ingredients, so to speak, that build up a, a flow. And first of all, it's really the trigger. And as we said, the trigger here is going to be the on new email. So anytime a new email turns up into my inbox, if it's got an attachment, we want to go ahead and go through it and go ahead and create that file in OneDrive for business. And then we have what we call conditions, which are, you know, for example, if yes, do X, if Y, or if no, do Y. But I don't want us to get too far into weeds there. Really just know triggers are what kick off the flow, actions are what actually happens within the flow, and then we can just do conditions to manipulate what happens within that flow. But let's go ahead and actually look at this as, as an experience. So I've got my OneDrive here, which currently has no files in it. Uh, and then I have Outlook. And I've already created this super important attachment that we want to send by email. So if I just go ahead and send that now. So now you've sent yourself the email and you've got a really important attachment in that you want to make sure is saved into OneDrive. Let's go ahead and go back to Power Automate and see what's happened. And the first thing we can notice under the 28 day run history is that we now actually have an item. We can see that it ran, it was successful, took, you know, succeeded, took one second. But what's really cool is that we can go into this and just see what happens. So if you click the, the date here, it now goes through and shows you what was successful. So you successfully got a new email and you can click into this to see kind of the details. And then we can also see that it successfully went ahead and created that file for us. And I'm not going to dig into this too far, but it's just worth knowing that you can go ahead and look what happens inside your flow. But what's really cool now is we can go back to OneDrive and look at that. We've now got email attachments from flow. So that was the folder that we said it wanted to create. And if we go inside that, we now have our word document. So we now have a word document for a really important email that is backed up into OneDrive. So our word document. So that's pretty awesome. That's our first flow. 
and we can go back to my flows and we can see that. But now let's go ahead and actually create another flow um, using instant flows and triggering this manually using a mobile device. So now we're going to switch gears a little bit and look at how we can create a trigger flow. So effectively, when I hit a button, it's going to go execute some actions. But we're going to do this from our mobile device instead of from my web browser. So I'm here in the Power Automate application on an iOS device. And the first thing that we're going to do is go ahead and choose buttons. And then from here, we're just going to create a button. What you're going to see is all the kind of templates that we have. I'm going to search for a specific template from block, and I'm going to choose block out my Office 365 calendar for an hour. From here, you can just go ahead and use this template. And once this template is loaded, it's just going to ask you now for a couple of bits of information. So we've got the trigger, manually trigger a flow, and that's going to be when I hit the button. But now I need to choose my calendar. And I'm just going to select calendar because it's going to be for my main calendar. And I'm actually going to change the, the subject. So for the subject, I'm just going to put in for focus time. And then we're just going to go ahead and hit create. And that's going to create this flow for us. And there we have it. I'm just going to hit done and then go back to buttons. And that was really, really easy. I now have a button that I can just hit at any time. And it's going to block my calendar out for an hour. So let's go ahead and try that. I'm just going to hit the button. And now that's going to execute that flow. But let's dive into Outlook and see our results. So now I'm here in Outlook. Look at that. We can see now there's a calendar entry for an hour. If I load that up, it now says calendar booked for focus time. And there we have it. That is pretty awesome. We just created in a matter of minutes a, a button that I can just hit and it creates a calendar entry for one hour for my focus time. And really, that's all we're going to show for the instant flows. And now let's dive in to looking at scheduled flows. All right, so I'm going to show you how to create our last one we're going to look at today, our last flow type, which is going to be scheduled flow. And we're not going to do a template this time around. We're going to go ahead and just create this from, from a blank canvas. So first thing you need to do is just hit scheduled flow. And then from there, what we're going to do is create a flow that says, hey, every once a month, go ahead and send me an email telling me to do my expenses. So firstly, let's give this thing a name. So we're just going to have do your expenses. And now we just need to choose when does this flow run? So I'm just going to say, look, it runs first of the month at 10 a.m. And then it's just going to run once a month. And that's all we need to set up here. And then we can just go ahead and click create. So what that's done for us is created our trigger. And our trigger is saying, look, once a month, go ahead and run the actions that we're about to build. And this is going to be really simple. All I'm going to do is go new step and then choose mail and send an email notification. And what we can do now from the two is just search for myself because this is all integrated into the rest of the suite. It can find me really quickly. And then from the subject, we just put do your expenses. And then from the body, I'll just put something in. It's fairly sarcastic to get me going, saying those expense reports are not going to fill in themselves. And now I'm going to hit save. And because it's not the first of the month, this isn't going to execute today. So that would mean I wouldn't be able to show you. But what we can do is what I haven't shown you before on the top right is we can choose test. And from test, I'm now going to say, look, I'm going to perform this trigger action myself. Let's click test and then run the flow. And what this is going to do is just run through these steps for us. And I can hit done here. And what we'll see is it already shows that for us. So we've got a green tick. Look, it's executed. And then we've got a, a green tick that it sent that email for us as well. So let's head over to Outlook. And what we can now see is there's a new email for me. So new emails in, do your expenses. They're not going to do themselves, Harry. And that reminder is now going to happen every month. So that's really it. That's just how to create a uh, 
scheduled flow from a blank canvas. And there we go. We finished kind of the demonstration on how to use Power Automate. I don't know about you, but I think this is a super cool service. Just being able to create these workflows, integrate to different applications. I mean, the possibilities are pretty much endless, but there's so much more that we could cover that I haven't in this video. Really, this is just to give you a taste and inspire you to start building your own flows inside Power Automate. But I would love to hear what you do come up with. So in the comments, put down some of the things that you've done in Power Automate. So that's it for this week. Make sure you like, subscribe, and we'll see you next week for another video on Microsoft software.